So I've got Brianna here with me, and um, and we're teaching Brianna how to use Vim, and uh, we actually got we got a little ways into the tutorial, and then I started getting my right and left mixed up, and so we had to restart. Um, so this time I'm gonna I'm gonna teach you the correct way. It was starting off such a good day, and we're gonna try to have the same level of enthusiasm that we had before. Okay. okay, I mix up right and left all the time. So first thing is uh, we're going to run Vim. Okay. So when I say run Vim, that means that you open up a terminal and you type Vim. Um, and then we're going to give this a file name. So I'm going to call this um, my first lesson with Vim, dot MD. Um, and MD is a... It means it means markdown, but it's it's not super important. We're going to get to that later when we when we start the blog, because I'm going to teach you how to set up your own blog. That's part of this process. Um, so the first thing that I need to teach you about Vim. Do you remember what the first thing was? Do you remember? How to get out. Okay, but what was the very first thing about how to get out? That. Sometimes you hit Control S and it freezes it, but if you hit Control Q, it unfreezes it. Okay, so Control Q. Control Q is the important thing. Control Q will unfreeze Vim. Yes. Okay. The next thing when you want to exit Vim is you want to make sure you're in insert mode. So you hit the letter I. I. Okay. So I and multiple then multiple times if it makes you feel better. Yeah, because you're frustrated. So me, it makes me feel better to hit I multiple times because then I see I start showing up. I'm like, oh, thank goodness, I'm in insert mode, <laughs> right? And then you can hit. And it blows off a little steam because you hit it a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. You should take some of the aggression out on the keyboard. Hopefully, you've got a a good, nice mechanical switch, durable keyboard, something from Germany. They do good engineering, especially on computer stuff. I would trust a keyboard from Germany more. Okay. Not really. Mine says insert recording. Uh, that's that's okay. Uh, you don't need to worry about that. That's a beautiful thing. So with this with this that we're talking about the hitting control Q, hitting I, and then the next step was what after hitting I? Escape. Yeah. Okay. So you hit escape, and and Brianna, um, she accidentally hit a button that has it so that now she's got what I've got on my screen. I'm not going to tell you what that button is, but I'm going to tell you that she accidentally hit it, and that's okay. This proves the point. We can still get out of them, even though we're confused and we don't know what's going on, right? So I'm going to hit escape a couple times. I'm going to hit I a couple of times. I'm going to hit escape again a couple of times, and then what's the way to quit Vim without saving? Do you remember? That key. Oh, what's it called? Colon. Yes. So colon. Q. Q. Exclamation point. Exclamation point. Because you're really point. excited to get out. <laughs> yes, that is right. So Q is for quit. And the exclamation is because you're excited to get out. That's exactly right. Boom. The good thing that you've learned here with control Q, hitting I to put you in an insert mode, then hitting escape to take you back to command mode, and then hitting colon Q exclamation mark. If you do nothing but those four sequences in random order, you'll at least make it out alive. That's important. Even those with years of experience, such as novices like myself, we occasionally hit a key sequence that puts us in a weird state. And that sequence gets us out and makes us feel safe again. At least it does for me. Right? <laughs> now, the next thing that you need to know if you intend to actually edit and save a file, because now I'm going to hit up and I'm going to hit enter. So I'm back into this and look. There's nothing of what I typed is in here, right? Right. So I, what do I, what do I do to start being able to type? Insert I. I. Okay. So I hit I, and then what sentence should we type? Now I can type exclamation. Yay! Exclamation. All right. Great. So now that I've typed this, I want to save this file. So what I'm going to do is hit what? Escape. Escape, correct. That puts me back in? Command form. Command mode. Command mode. Command, command mode, right. Which means I can 
tell it to do stuff. Right. So, for example, exiting would be a command, right? Yes. Okay, so so I, I want to make quitting. a distinction between exiting and quitting. So the quit is like, hands up, I give up, right? Whereas exit is a little more graceful, right? <laughs> so the way to exit and save is with the key. Which key? So we hit escape X. and colon X. That is correct. And enter. Yay. All right. That worked. <laughs> now, um, you may not have seen this command before. Well, you have, Brianna. But there's a command called cat. And you might think, oh, that's going to bring up the internet, which is mostly just cats. <laughs> and that would be like really great intuition, but it would in fact be wrong. Cat is short for concatenate. Um, but what we often use it for is just to view the contents of a file. Okay. So I'm going to type cat. I looked up what concatenate meant in the dictionary. And it says, is the operation of joining two character strings end-to-end. -end. Okay. Which helped me a little bit, so I thought I'd say that. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Good, because that probably wouldn't have helped me when I was <laughs> <laughs> learning what it was. Um, it So cat will just print as many files as you give it. It will print all of them to the screen. Um, so I want to keep in line with the Vim tutorial and not get too far off track. But I do want you to know um, how to fix a common problem that you encounter with cat. So first let's do what we intend to do. So cat space my hit tab and should fill out to the file name. And then I can see that it prints out the contents of the file. That's what cat does. Now I'm going to do something stupid. And it's probably going to result in a lot of ugliness. Okay, so... Um, yeah, that, that actually crashed my terminal. Um, let me try something different instead. Um, here we go. Cat bin ZSH. ZSH is a program. So when I cat it to the screen, it's going to look a lot like the other thing. Now, what happens after you do this sometimes is that uh, you're... You, well, it didn't happen to me this time. I don't know how to make it happen, but sometimes after this happens and you get kind of scared because you're like, oh my goodness, I don't know what just happened. I feel I feel anxious. I think I've got an anxiety attack starting to come on. Oh, you don't have that problem? Okay, anyway. <laughs> so you can just type reset. And if you had a bunch of funky weird stuff, reset will take you back to normal. Um, and I, I wish I knew a file that would like put it in the weird funky mode. But basically it would make it so that when you type, it types those funky characters instead of typing regular stuff. Now back to Vim. So Vim, my, hit tab. I get to open it up. Now I can type, yay. Uh, so next thing is, if I want to go backwards or forwards, uh, in Vim, you can use the arrow keys. But a lot of systems, so the reason that, that Vim is important to know is because it's, it's installed on almost every system, either Vim or VI. VI is the first one, and Vim is VI improved. So it's kind of a play on words, right? Yeah. So Vim is VI improved. Now, in VI, you can't actually use the arrow keys. Um, when you try to use the arrow keys, it'll do stuff like, oops, no, that didn't work. Um, it'll do stuff like print uh, funny characters to the screen, like a carrot and the letter D, or stuff like that. <laughs> um and so I need you to take your right hand and raise it high up in the air. Come on, Brianna. Get it up there. And and you too, you people that are watching. Come on. Put it. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Now, now this time I'm not going to get my own directions confused because I've got my right hand up in the air and I know where my ring finger is. I know which finger that is. The ring finger is the finger that is next to my pinky. And uh, that finger is the finger that will go left. Dang it, right. <laughs> oh. That is the finger that goes right because it is on the right. <laughs> Can't do it. 
Now my index finger is next to my thumb. My, my index finger is the finger that goes left. So what I want you to do is take your hand and put it on the home row of the keyboard. So your pinky will be on the semicolon character, your ring finger will be on L, and your index finger, which is next to your thumb, will be on the letter J. You're, you're, you're getting ahead. Go back with me for just a minute. Let's pretend like you're not a genius for just five seconds. Brianna's has already mastered this technique, and she's <laughs> bored and wants to go on to other things. Okay. Stick with me for just a minute. Okay, so I just want to practice this. So take your ring finger. I, I was actually... Oh, okay. Just putting another line so I can tell the difference between up and down. Oh, that's... I that's, only had one line. Okay, that's, that's, a, good, that's a good deal. Um, but So first, take, take your, um, your ring finger, and, and then... And it should not do anything if you're at the end of the line. And then if you take your index finger and then you move it over to H, um, then you should be going left. So your ring finger will take you right and your index finger will take you left. You can remember that because your ring finger starts with an R and right starts with an R. That is correct. That is absolutely correct. Um... And 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 I'm not gonna say anything because if I do, I'll probably get them mixed up. I'm just gonna do what I know, what feels good, because I know where my fingers are supposed to be, but I don't know my right from my left. <laughs> anyway, so um, next step is to insert a new line. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hit I to go into insert mode, and I'm going to um, I'm gonna hit enter. Oh. And now that that took me down, I'm gonna hit de delete. Oh, I'm gonna hit escape, and I'm gonna go all the way over, and then I'm gonna hit insert. Okay, well, I guess we'll just have to in put in that again. Okay, so the next thing is uh, now I'm gonna type a sentence down here. Yeah, I'm all about multiple sentences. And you can see the color on my screen after this. Uh, oh, look, there I used my index finger to go to the left. Um, with the I'm in, you, you can see the color starting there. That's because uh, Vim is not configured correctly yet. And so it, it thinks that that um, quoted strings should be different colors uh, or quoted words. We call those strings in the computer language world. Anything that has a bunch of text, we call a string. Anyway. Um, so, so look, now I can go left Which adds and to your right. theory about the internet being all about cats. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Strings, cats, yarn. You got it. So now there's a, f the, um, so in your, in your index finger's natural position where there's a little knot on the J, if, if you hit that, um, then, uh, you go, let's see, which way? That goes down. Okay, that goes down, so, yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing anything. But if you hit the one that is under your middle finger, your middle finger okay. goes up, right? So I don't want you to think of this so much as, like, what letter you're hitting as much as which finger is controlling what. 